It's possible to include a bit of HTML on your page if you can't achieve something natively with Bubble. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create really neat looking HTML chips, uh, or some people call them tags, um, to display something like a shortlist on a row. So here we can see we've got a skills list, and these are really beautiful little tags that I've created in uh, native HTML and inserted in a repeating group. But let's first start with what is achievable with bubble native text. So if I had to delete this, and then I grab some text, drop it in there, just going to make sure it's the same dimensions as this, so two, three, four width, starting at six, four, eight. Two, three, four width, starting at six, four, eight. Not fixed width, 20% and 35Y. Okay. And this is actually 28 in height. Okay, fine. So if we want to display a list in this row using Bubbles HTML text element, we would say current cells uses skills. Let's have a look what this result looks like. And yeah, it looks fine, but it doesn't really pop, it doesn't really jump out at you. Um, and there are various separators you could use here. You could use a plus, or you could use a vertical line or backslash, forward slash. But personally, if I really want some of my list to stand out, especially if it's something that your users are looking at, then I do jump in and tend to use HTML elements for that. The other thing I wanted to show you as well is the limitation if we wanted to create something that looked similar to that HTML chip, what we could do is remove the style, center it horizontally, and then drop a background style, slight green, and then add a roundness of say 20. And notice that we cannot achieve what we can achieve using HTML, which is all separated chips. So let's go back to the actual solution for this. I'm going to delete that. Now we can grab a HTML element here under visual elements and drop it in your repeating group. Again, I want to make sure that it's exactly the same as the skills, which is two, three, four, starting at six, four, eight. 2, 3, 4, starting at 6, 4, 8, and is 28 in height. Thirty-five Y value. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste some of this code instead of writing it manually just to save time. And you can go ahead and just copy this straight out of the tutorial. So I'm just going to paste that in and we need a closing div here. Okay, let's break this down quickly. So this is a HTML tag or chip, let's call it a chip. So what we have are two style tags over here and the closing style tag here. So whatever happens in this section is basically styling that little chip. Below we have our div class, which is tag. Okay, notice that this word tag is the same as the dot tag span up here. So these need to match, okay? 
if you are creating multiple HTML elements on a page, those classes all need to be individual, all need to be unique. Now, how do we actually get data in here? Because this isn't actually showing any data. This is just the styling. So we need to insert our data right here between the span and div tag. So we can actually insert dynamic data right at this point. And that is the current cells user skills. Now, after this is something possibly new to you, and it is just not a hack, but uh, a particular technique to get the desired styling and result. So what we're going to say is join with, okay. And we're going to, now we're going to use our keypad at this stage and go open bracket, forward slash span, type it in, close bracket. Don't press enter straight away, open bracket again, and just type the word span without the forward slash, close the bracket. Now just click in this area over here. So this takes, and when it says more, just type CAP and we want to capitalize words. Okay. Now let's have a look at the result. And that is an absolutely stunning way to represent things like skills lists or just short lists on a row. Let's just quickly jump back and go through these individual items so that you can customize these to suit the look and feel of your own app. Okay, so at the top we have the padding, which is six and 10 pixels. We have background. This is what will probably interest you the most. So that is the background color which is this color over here. I tend to keep it quite light. You can also make it darker, but then you need to make your text color lighter. Border radius is obviously the roundness on the edges. Color is the color of the text. So I've got this darker color, almost black. And font family is Arial and font size is 12 pixels. Below this, you don't need really need to worry. I guess we could increase the font weight. So if I make it 600 and the font size to 13, that should make the text bolder and a bit bigger. Okay, but I don't particularly like it too bold. So I'm just going to change it back. Now something to note is that the the HTML needs to fit within this HTML element. If I had three items on a row over here, if I had one more skills for each person, it will probably want to wrap to the next line. So we do, we do need to be cognizant of what it is that we are displaying. Um, and if you've got a really long list, it probably wouldn't work very well in this repeating group. Let's have a look at this one more time. Okay, I'm really happy with that. So if you want sort of a cleaner way to have a look at what I've typed here, I'm just gonna hit the HTML editor and you can pause the video at this stage and write your own little expression for creating something similar. 